Hello and welcome. Today we will be revisiting the financial statements. Uh, accounting and financial statements are very involving. It is a subject by its own strength. Uh, just because uh, we have to have some understanding, uh, good understanding on the on the financial statements to uh, really prepare a business plan or understand whether you are making profit or uh, if you want to become an, an analyst or a consultant, uh, having a grip on the on the cost and uh, how you can make profit, etc., etc., is absolutely essential. So. Uh, uh, with that view, I am just giving another example which is slightly more exhaustive, uh, so that uh, maybe many of the points I have missed in the, in the first session, so I will be uh, perhaps uh, covering them. So, first off, uh, let us understand one thing very clearly. One is, when you look at the balance sheet, uh, the liabilities that you see, equity and liabilities. Uh, these are sources of money. This is very important to understand. So, let us uh, go one by one. Owner's equity. So, owner's equity uh, for two components make uh, make up owner's equity. One is fully paid up uh, uh, share capital. That means, owners have brought money to the company. So, this is a source of money, money coming from some source own from owners. Second one is reserves and surplus, which is a, a surplus or or uh, retained profit that is coming from uh, your profit loss account on for every year. So, this is a accumulation of, of the retained profit, the surpluses that the company has been generating over the years. Then short term liabilities, these are uh, this starts with uh, maybe trade payable, meaning uh, this is also source of money in what sense somebody has supplied you goods and uh, he or she is yet to uh, uh, get the payment, meaning that you are using somebody else's uh, material to do the business. Suppose you process that, sell that and get the money and then you pay, pay him up. So, that means you are doing business on somebody else's money. In From that point of view, this is a source of money, source of capital. So, that is how trade payable is a source of money, short term bank loan, meaning why short term? Because you are raising this loan to acquire asset which are short term like say stock, like uh, say receivables, you want to fund them. So, when you want to fund uh, short term assets, then bank gives a, a kind of a short term loan called working capital loan, well, we may or may not discuss that in detail. So, uh, whenever bank gives working capital loans uh, for managing your day to day activities, this is termed as short term loan. Normally, these loans are repayable on demand, meaning any time bank can tell the company that you re return this money. Whereas, on the contrary, the long term loan that you see uh, is a loan given for procuring long term assets. Suppose you want to buy a computer or a machine, a, a transporter like a truck or say you want to construct a building, uh, uh, some students take education loan which is repayable over a long period of time, because you uh, for two concepts. One is uh, this asset remains with you and you derive the benefit over a long period of time and that is why bank uh, get means bank in stipulates a repayment schedule which is um, spread over a long time. So, you cannot uh, another reason why this is so is that you buy a machine for a for, for a good amount of money. If you charge the entire amount on your uh, profit loss account, then uh, you will incur suddenly you will incur so much of loss. You have to you have to recover that money that is true, but then you cannot really charge the entire amount of profit loss account in a particular year. We do it in a in a uh, installment manner. So that is what depreciation is. We'll come to that. But uh, this is another source of money. So, all the items that you see in uh, uh, liabilities are sources of money and all the items that you see on the asset side is an application of money, meaning you have used those money that you have received from different sources to create these assets. So, first thing is current asset meaning uh, raw material, receivables, some cash also remains, some money remains in the form of cash. Then non current assets are land, building, plant machinery, etcetera, etcetera. A very important point here is that, uh, that uh, this is utilization of money, meaning you are parking money to create some asset. Sometimes this is very important, you spend money 
in uh, to incur operational expenses operating expenses but then this expense may be too high and the benefit accrued through uh, out of this money may be long term so for example you spend some money in research and development or you you build a brand through advertisement uh, promotion etc so you incur a, a quite a good amount of money in a certain year then you don't want to charge that into your profit loss account uh, the entire amount in a particular year you want to charge gradually because you derive the benefit uh, gradually over the years at the same time you don't want to uh, charge the profit loss account with a, with a huge amount of money in a certain year there you will uh, there will be loss of means um, continuity or uh, say uh, your profit loss account will suddenly be in the red then suddenly uh, too much of profit too much of loss there should be some some kind of uh, uniformity in your bottom line so what you do is you show these expenses in the asset side why asset because this is an application of money you have used money to incur operational expenses so you put that money this is an application of money so you convert that into asset normally we call it capitalization of some expenses capitalization of operating expenses capitalization of research and development expenses why capitalization you you are kind of converting that into some kind of capital asset meaning it, it becomes a long term asset for two reasons why number one is you derive the benefit over a long period of time number two you amortize that meaning you allow a portion of that total expense as expense and charge it to the profit loss account so uh, you charge you re recover this en entire expenses over a long period of time so it has a nature of fixed asset means capital asset that is why these are uh, this term will come very soon so i'm just explaining that uh, beforehand that amortization meaning you capitalize some operational expenses like research and development uh, um, um, ad advertisement expenses and particularly for a startup you capitalize the preliminary and pre operative expenses meaning the expenses that you incur before you actually go to market and uh, gain some sales suppose you are developing a product it takes suppose 2 years so during this 2 years you are paying some salary to your employees or res whosoever are doing the research then there will be someone to uh, clean your room then someone to do the errands and uh, like rent that you pay like whatever expense that you incur during this 2 years you don't want to show that as expense immediately you want to capitalize that keep it in the balance sheet in the form of capitalized preliminary and pre operative expenses and then you want to amortize that over maybe 5 6 7 8 9 10 years uh, of your liking uh, of your choice meaning you can cap amortize that in 5 years if you think that in this is a small amount of money if i amortize in 5 years it's not going to significantly uh, adversely affect my profit loss account then you can amortize it for 5 years you can amortize it for 10 years it is your choice depending on uh, your level of comfort having said that let us uh, uh, go through the entire process of this uh, financial statement preparation see uh, today's in today's world every company even a small company uh, perhaps uh, manages their manages their uh, accounting uh, using some kind of computer software so uh, the question may be why should we learn this is like this whatever you become suppose you are an entrepreneur or you are a manager or you are an analyst or say you are kind of a consultant you need to have a grip on every item in the in the financial statements why so because suppose you are a, you are a consultant and uh, you have an assignment to s recommend somebody as to what should they do to improve profit so you need to understand where the company can cut corner corners and uh, uh, reduce cost or maybe how they can increase the price without affecting sales etc etc to understand that you must have a fair idea what these expenses are which one is expense which one is capital in nature what is balance sheet item it's very important to understand otherwise you you won't be able to do whether you are an analyst or anything whatever so you will have at the end of the year suppose you are sitting with all the data so what are these data where are they coming from 
in a, in a physical format, these data are maintained in the form of ledgers. So, suppose payment of rent, there will be a ledger of rent and at the end of the year, during the year, whenever you paid rent, you have inserted an entry in the rent ledger and at the end of the year, you make a sum total of that, you get payment of rent during the year. Likewise, payment of advertisement expenses during the year. So, all the expenses there will be a separate laser. So, you sit with all the lasers, may be soft, may be hard, may be digital, may be physical. Now, your job is to classify them or understand them uh, clearly as to which one is revenue in nature, which one is capital in nature, which one will go to balance sheet, which one should come to profit loss account. So, that is why first part is to understand all these classification very clearly. Okay. We will come to that before uh, going to classification of them. When you have all the data in front of you, the first thing that you want to do is to estimate gross profit. It is very simple to do and uh, uh, provided you understand what it is. For gross profit, one thing is to be uh, okay before that. Uh, we are taking an example of a trading company, which is kind of a retail trader or something where there is no manufacturing. If I add manufacturing, it is going to add a little bit of complexity. I am not going into that. If you understand this, then you know my migrating to uh, a manufacturing accounting will not be very difficult. So, uh, understand that this is only for trading account. Now, if you are uh, defining gross profit, gross profit is nothing but like this you are making some sales. Suppose you, suppose you have, uh, I started with an example of a, of a, uh, a stationary shop in a hostel room. Let us be there, so, so that you can connect well and, and the whole uh, dimension is quite, quite uh, imaginable. So, suppose during the year, you have, you have sold goods of a stationary like pen, pen, pencil, paper, notebooks, etcetera of say 10,000 rupees. No, that is your sales. Means you have a laser, general laser, where you insert sales every time you make some sales. And at the end of the year, you have made a sum total of all the sales that is 10,000 rupees. That is the sales. Now, you want to know to achieve these sales or whatever you sold, you have sold some goods. What is your cost of acquisition of this goods or what was the purchase, total purchase value of the items that you sold, not the items that are there with you now. Means, at the end of the year, if some goods are left, these are left over, not the cost of them. You want to know the cost of the goods that you sold for 10,000 rupees and then you deduct the sales, deduct the cost of goods sold from the sales you get gross profit. So, it is the margin meaning you have a procurement cost and you have sales. The difference is the gross profit and gross profit divided by sales is the gross profit margin which is very important we will discuss that. To understand that you have to uh, you have to visualize your room again that in your room there is a business going on retail trade that you are operating. Now, suppose on 31st of March 2017, 31st of March happens to be the end of the financial year 2016-17. Every financial year starts on the 1st of April, ends on the 31st of March. There may be deviation, we are not going to that. Now, suppose your year is ended on 31st of March, midnight 12 o'clock. So, midnight till midnight 12 o'clock, whatever you have sold is sold. Now, you are going to bed at 12 midnight. So, you want to have a look as to how the year has gone and whatever is left over, you want to have a kind of a clear view about that. So, you look into your kind of uh, inventory or you want to see the stocks. Maybe you have a physical look or maybe you have a laser where your leftover stock will be written somewhere. Now, whatever you see physically or in the ledger, that is the stock which you could not sell during the year, that remains unsold. So, you make an estimate of the sum total and what do you understand? What is this? The answer is 
this is your closing stock for the year meaning during the financial year 2016-17 you purchased many things and many of the things you sold but at the end of the year some of the things are yet to be sold no no there is no company who, who sells everything at the end of the year unless they have a, a stock clearing some kind of a very special business every company will have some stock at the end of the year so that becomes your closing stock and when you prepare a balance sheet as on 31st march 2017 balance sheet refers to a particular date and that is at the close of business by close of business i mean at 12 midnight when you close the shutter you don't do any transaction no transaction henceforth means happening beyond this point will will be added to this year so as on say as at, at the close of the business on 31st march 2017 whatever stock you see that is the closing stock that is shown in the balance sheet as closing stock and then suppose you wake up on 1st of April meaning the next day early in the morning whatever you see in the shop that is your opening stock what do you see you see whatever you saw in the previous night when you went to bed nothing happened in between you were sleeping so previous years closing stock becomes current years opening stock so if previous years closing stock was 500 rupees this year's opening stock is also 500 rupees so that becomes your opening stock now let us let us estimate the gross profit so to understand the cost of goods sold you have to understand that previous year some stock was carried forward to the next year which is my opening stock so next day on 1st of april this stock was available for me to start selling then whenever a stock required some replenishment you procured new stock so during the year you procured lot of stock what is that that is your purchase of goods so you had some stock at the beginning of the year and then you have purchased some goods these two together make available goods to sell so opening a stock plus purchase during the year is the total available goods but have you sold all of this you have not sold all of this how much you did not sell that is the stock that is that will remain at the end of the year again this year 1718 when on 31st of march 2018 you go to bed to sleep whatever you see that is the closing stock as on 31st march 2018 that you could not sell so you had opening stock then you procured something this is the total available stock minus the closing stock that you could not sell is the cost of goods sold so you start from there then if you have cost of goods sold calculated you deduct that from uh, sales you get gross profit so let us see here say opening stock is or where do you get opening stock i have already explained that opening stock is the closing stock of the previous year so you have to go to previous years balance sheet to understand opening stock so this is previous years closing stock and that happens to be your opening stock this year this is as on 31st march 2017 so this is the closing stock as on 31st march 2017 this happens to be the opening stock as on 1st of april 2017 which means the opening stock of the current year so opening stock is equal to exactly closing stock of that so it is it has means everything has been done with the formula with a, with a link so so that you can practice i'll send this also uh, to the registered uh, uh, members so you can practice that way now purchase during the year so you have to again go to the list of general ledgers these are the items which were these this column are the items that is the gist of the general ledgers whatever general ledgers you had all balances are given here so you like purchase also has is a general ledger and you have to find out where all the purchase of goods are there so see this is the purchase of goods now so you just uh, link them so that there is no uh, mistake so is equal to purchase and purchase of goods is 2500 now this plus this makes 
total available goods which is 2620 minus closing stock has to be there in the ledger. This will not come from balance sheet because this has been the earlier year opening stock has been closed. Now, you have opened a new ledger and gradually, gradually whatever is left at the end of the year you want to look at that and then that comes that 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 is available only in the in the ledger that you will take it to ne, uh, this year's balance sheet when you prepare the balance sheet you take the closing stock from here and put it in the balance sheet you also need that data in here to calculate the close means uh, cost of goods sold so this plus this meaning opening a stock plus purchase minus closing a stock is the cost of goods sold so cost sales minus cost of goods sold is the gross profit or is the sales sales is here 5000 so 5000 minus cost of goods sold is gross profit one part is done next in the order is to calculate operating profit but you cannot directly go to calculate operating profit you have to do a lot of things the first thing first that is you have to calculate depreciation operating you means the objective is to estimate the operating expenses, but one element of the operating expenses is the depreciation. So, we have to estimate the depreciation first otherwise we would not be able to move forward. So, let us estimate the depreciation as I explained at the beginning itself and earlier that depreciation is a portion of your fixed assets that you want to charge in your profit loss account rather than it becoming a very unsystematic thing, there is a process of apportioning your fixed asset into your profit loss account, because you have incurred this expense. Unless you charge that into your profit loss account, this will remain a sunk cost and you will never be able to recover and you will have a wrong notion about profitability, because your machine also is contributing. So, machine cost also is to be charged as your cost of production, cost of sales, everything. So, we have to estimate depreciation and charge it as operating expenses, so as to get the real operating profit. So, how do you do that? The formula or the process or the, the system of doing that is to apply form, a process. There are, there are many kinds of depreciation, uh, there is a straight line method where you need to have uh, three data one is the life of the asset useful life of the asset and then what is whatever is the um, uh, terminal value meaning after the useful life or whatever value you are going to recover from there and then the initial value. So, initial value minus salvage value or terminal value gives you the depreciable amount then you divide that by the useful life you get per year depreciation and every year depreciation is the same that is a straight line method. But for a company uh, unless you have a computerized system of uh, uh, accounting depreciating each asset separately is a is a kind of a important means a challenging thing particularly in a classroom situation where you may have I say tens of say maybe some 10 assets that now estimating depreciation for each of them because you need to know their procurement date then when they are kind of uh, or end of useful life then whatever is the salvage value you have to estimate this is a kind of a complex thing. For simplicity we use declining value method meaning you take the procurement price you do not need uh, any data about salvage value you do not need data about useful uh, life you all that you need is whatever is the depreciation rate. Suppose depreciation rate is 10 percent then you just charge 10 percent on the book value book value meaning whatever the value that was there at the end of the last year. Then if you have procured some asset add that with the previous years balance. If you have sold some asset you deduct that from the total then whatever is left that is the asset that you have total asset that you have at the end of the current year the year for which you are preparing the balance sheet profit loss account profit loss account. So, at that point of time that is the total depreciable asset. Now, you depreciate if it is 10 percent depreciated 10 percent after depreciation whatever remains is the book value post depreciation is the book value that goes into the balance sheet as on the end of the current year. So, that is about depreciation. 
So, uh, for uh, one more thing just let me mention uh, we have mentioned it many times land is never depreciated land is never depreciated whatever is the case if, if, if uh, just remember that. Now, you have to say we start with building then machinery why separately because normally building has a lower depreciation rate because building depreciates slowly it remains for a longer time. So, normally there is a policy that building will be depreciated at a lower rate. Particularly for this example, we are depreciating building at 5 percent and all machinery at the rate of 10 percent. Machinery by machinery we mean uh, by building we mean any building whether it is brick building or it is a factory shed or any kind of building say, say a, a room for security guard or a quarters for your employees any kind of building will be depreciated at 5 percent. It is not standard, but for this example machinery will include all the machinery all the equipment even a truck is a machinery is a computer is a machinery. So, all the all the equipment and machinery and uh, whatever uh, you fixed asset you have long term asset except except land will be depreciated at 10 percent as machinery. So, uh, for building as per last account, so you, you have to see the previous year's balance sheet whatever was the building. So, see building was 500 rupees. Now, you have to see whether we have procured any new building during the year. So, you have to go through the entire list of uh, ledgers and see whether there is some kind of a construction of building or sale of building this is to be accounted for. So, I will not waste lot of time actually here perhaps there is a factory shed or something I have uh, put in put in green color. So, you just look for anything that construction of factory shed that is 200. So, you have to add that with the previous account and uh, there is no other item as far as I remember. So, we will not waste lot of time. So, building as per last year account is 500 and we have constructed a factory shed. So, this is new purchase. So, it becomes 700 our depreciation rate is at the rate of 5 percent. So, 700 into 5 percent is 35. Now, you deduct 35 out of 700 you get depreciated value of the total asset total building building asset. So, your new book value becomes 665 not as on 31st March 2017, but as on 31st March 2018. Okay. Now, machinery as per last year account just as as uh, the depreciation a plant and machinery here you have uh, 1000 I am not going there just to save time. Then you have to see whether we have made purchases of new machine. So, you have to now visit the entire list of general laser item purchase of equipment is one. So, this is 200 then purchase of land is not part of it because land is not depreciated then uh, purchase of truck is another one. So, 200 plus 300 makes 500 purchase of telephone telephone means it is a handset may be a cell phone may be a land phone whatever phone that is it is a gadget a machine. So, this is also part of equipment. So, 500 plus 20 is 520 then you have purchased a computer for 20. So, 520 plus 20 is 540 now there is no other asset. So, this is the addition 540 is the new addition add them up and you have total of 1540. Now, you have to see whether you have sold any machine incidentally there is a sale of machine for 50. So, you have to deduct that. So, you deduct that you get a total depreciable asset equipment of 1490 that you depreciate at the rate of 10 percent you get 149 as depreciation then book value becomes 1341 meaning this uh, total depreciable asset minus depreciation makes you uh, uh, this is the book value for the for the year 2018 meaning for the time as on 31st March 2018 this is the book value for equipment. Now, this depreciation 149 plus depreciation for the building some total of that is 184 this is the data that we are interested in for estimating operating expenses. Then there is similar kind of an entry called amortization which will be they are somewhere in the laser or your policy that we are going to amortize our preliminary pre operative expense or some expenses whatever is there uh, it is right here amortization of capitalized preliminary and pre operative expenses meaning that you have incurred some expenses before the start of the company that is 100 now you want to not 100 that is there in the balance sheet, but 100 out of that 
you want to amortize this year. Look at the balance sheet and you will get this data. This is uh, amortization is an asset. So, it should be in the asset side. Why asset? Because you have spent some money. So, this is an application of money that is why it is an asset. So, you may have confusion that this is an expense, now we have capitalized. So, this should be a liability or something, but this is actually an asset because of the philosophy that this is an application of money and you have to recover that. So, it was 1000, but this year you are amortizing to the extent of 100. So, it will be reduced by 100 because you are charging your profit loss account by 100. So, next year the amortization that is to uh, re, uh, remaining to be amortized will remain will be 900 1000 minus 100 whatever that is let us be here. So, depreciation is 184 amortization that is to be charged to the profit loss account is another 100 this is to be added to your operating expenses. So, now operating expenses is here and you can see all the formulas. Okay, now, uh, this is very important that we uh, classify them we have discussed, but I have a long exhaustive list of items. See payment of rent, the rent that you pay and you forget about it any periodical expenses that you make mostly they are operating expenses. Rent you pay per month and forget about it the, the guy who received the rent goes away advertisement advertisement expense unless you capitalize this is operating expenses if you capitalize that is different salary is is operating expense because you pay on a monthly basis and that is part of your regular expenses that goes into your product or services fuel cost goes into your product and it becomes it is consumed during the year itself insurance mostly you pay uh, uh, on an on a monthly basis or yearly basis so it is spent off and it becomes part of your regular expenses. So, it is operating expenses, employee benefit also is operating expenses. Now, purchase of land is a capital asset that is a balance sheet item that is not an operating expense, because it is it is not going directly in, into your product or service, it is contributing, but it remains with you for a long time. Whatever is whatever portion of your fixed asset like equipment is going into your production that you are showing as depreciation. So, that we are accounting for gradually not during the year. So, that this should be absolutely clear transportation expenses, maintenance expenses. L transportation expenses is a money that you good that you give to a transporter like a truck owner or say a rickshaw or whosoever is doing your transportation. But suppose you purchase a transporter, a truck that is your equipment that is not allowed as an operational expenses. A portion of that is allowed like in the form of depreciation, but not the total cost. So, this year you are buying a truck for something purchase of truck of 300, you do not allow that as operating expenses, because that is a capital asset you allow only a portion of that. We have already taken into account this part in here and we have depreciated that by 10 percent. So, 10 percent of that 30 rupees has come here. So, that is how all the items are classified. So, eventually we have all the items I have given I have tried to make it exhaustive, but there are many more items particularly in, in digital A's there are many many digital expenses like say for internet for website for what not. So, uh, that that is how this operating expenses are estimated. Uh, so, 1734 is the total you can see the formula and see how they have classified the discussion that we met should be good enough. So, you deduct this from your gross profit to get operating profit. So, remember that operating expenses include all the operating expenses and depreciation and amortization, but not interest interest is de deducted later. So, whatever is the operating profit this is also termed as EBITA, e -B -I -T -A, EBITA meaning earning before interest tax, interest and tax, earning before interest and tax operating profit. So, actually I should have written here EBITA, e -B -I -T -A. here just remember one thing that uh, as per American convention for profit they call uh, they call earning, but in India we call profit for 
we call net profit they call net earning we call operating profit they call it operating earning so uh, sorry this is ebitra e b i t so uh, for ebitra means earning before interest and interest uh, earning before interest and tax ebit i'm sorry not a ebit so earning before interest and tax why earning because it is an american word american acronym uh, in Indian context, it should be profit before interest and tax. Whereas, there is another term called EBITDA, which is earning before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. If you want to estimate that, it should be your EBIT, EBIT plus depreciation and amortization, which is nothing but uh, you see the dep total depreciation is here uh, 184 and uh, plus amortization also that is your EBITDA meaning earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization. So, EBITDA, EBITDA is more because you have depreciation and amortization in this whereas, in EBIT this is deducted meaning depreciation and then amortization is deducted, but tax is always there. So, that is forget about EBITDA EBIT just let us remain in uh, operating profit earning before interest tax depreciation oh, that is this is actually. Uh, earning before interest tax depreciation and this data should have been the same uh, there sh there must have been something this should be the same actually this is EBITDA. So, this is uh, this should be uh, E 12 E 12 is why 12 is uh, operating profit whatever this is just the philosophy should be clear I will I'll correct it and send I do not know why these two data are becoming different. Then you deduct interest from uh, operating profit you deduct interest from operating profit to get profit before tax then you pay income tax on that say 30 percent or whatever then you get net profit out of net profit you pay dividend net profit is the amount that is that belongs to the owner they can do anything out of it now the tax is paid so this money belong to the owners so they decided to pay dividend of 100 they could have decided to pay 500 rupees as dividend then you deduct all the 500 whatever is left you carry forward that to balance sheet add it to uh, uh, reserves and surplus that becomes a new reserves and surplus so this year uh, founders decided that okay 100 rupees is to be deducted as dividend they paid themselves 100 rupees so retained profit is 404 this is to be added to previous years uh, reserves and surplus to get the new reserves and surplus okay before we go to the balance sheet let me explain gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sale operating profit margin is operating profit divided by sales net profit margin is net profit divided by sales everything is with reference to sell multiplied by 100 of course that goes without saying now if you go to the balance sheet you will see that whatever is the reserves and surplus you have here as on 31 3 2017 this is to be means your current year retained profit will be added to this to get the next year's reserves and surplus we will give a break at this point and then we will restart in the next session Thank you very much.